Well, here I'm at the workshop of fellow furniture maker Andy Lawton in Derbyshire. And uh, we both have a shared long-standing relationship with Axminster Power Tools. And Andy's uh, got a larger version of the sander I've got. It's a, a dual drum sander, Andy. That's right, Jeremy. This is the, the industrial dual drum sander. The, the main features of this machine are the capacity. It'll take up to uh, panels um, up to 630 millimetres wide and has a total uh, working depth of 150 millimetres which will pretty much cope with, with most of the components that furniture makers uh, will be putting through it. The, the dual drums mean that you, you can fit a slightly finer grit paper on the rear drum so that in one pass you can effectively do two levels of, of grit. You can go down to the next finest grit. Um, so is one drum set differently to the other? Yes, it's, you can either use one drum or both of them. The, the rear drum is completely independent, so that can be raised or lowered as, as necessary. The other good feature is that the conveyor belt is electronically controlled, so it's, it's impossible to overload it. If you're taking off too, try to take off too deep a cut, the um, sensor will slow down the conveyor belt, so it will just... Uh, feed the work piece through more slowly. And what's going on here Andy? Th this is a very accurate digital readout so once you've established a, a, a datum say you want to take, I'll say you measure the thickness of the, of the board as it is and zero these um, digital readouts then you can take off a very tiny fraction in each pass so it's possible to feed multiple components through then reset the machine you know exactly how much you're taking off which is great if your thicknessing veneers, as I often do, I feed them through on a carrying board and I can accurately pick them down, thickness them down to a millimetre and a half or even less with care. Now I notice that as you're thicknessing this veneer it's set at a really slow speed. The reason that the material is feeding through very slowly is that the conveyor belt automatically senses how much material the drums are removing and it slows it down correspondingly which, which extends the life of the grit. But that did seem remarkably slow. Quite often I would send it through at a higher speed. If we send material through too slowly, certain timbers, particularly cherry, uh, you can get burning and scorching. Just like many machines, you really have to experiment with it and get to know how it works to get the best out of it. So what grit uh, papers do you use? The coarsest I use is a 60 grit which is coarse enough to be useful actually for, for stock removal, which is excellent for thickness sanding veneers and other difficult timbers which may shatter or be difficult to do in the planing machine. For example, sanding a, burr, a piece of burr timber, very difficult to do on a planing machine or by hand, but by putting it through this sander, you can get an excellent finish by using a coarse grit. The finest grit I use is 120, which is almost enough for a, uh, for a finish. And is, are these grits on paperback or they're, they're cloth back? The, the best ones, paperbacks are okay, but the best ones are cloth back grits, which are with a full range available from Axminster. Now Andy, when you and I started off woodworking, um, machines like this were in our dreams, weren't they? They were. These were industrial machines like this at one time, but way beyond the reach of an indi individual craftsman. But, They've now come down in price hugely and are very affordable for a small workshop like ours. And I found that in the year that I've owned this, it's more or less paid for itself in that time, the amount of time it saves me. Because finishing is an unbelievably it, time it is. consuming. It, it, it's, it takes ages. To get a good finish on, on lots of components, on a big piece of furniture, it's a very slow job. And this speeds up the job and, and frees us up to do the things which which only handwork can do, such as dovetailing and so on. But this wouldn't be final finish though, would it? N no, I would always, uh, this is all a preparation really, it takes out the donkey work and then final finishing would always be by, by hand. Well on my smaller accidents to drum sander, I've only got one uh, dust extraction takeoff, but I see there are two on yours, Andy. Well, dust extraction on, on any sanding machine is, is vitally important and I feel it's better to use two dust extractors which take advantage of the twin dust ports on the machine. 
dust is a major, if you like, invisible enemy it, in um, it, it is. workshop. It, it, it's the dust that we can't see that does the damage that can get into your lungs and cause health problems. So dust extraction is, uh, is very important. Yes. Uh, certainly I've visited factories in Scandinavia and they're almost uh, like hotels. Mm. There's hardly a speck of dust mm. anywhere. It's important to get the establish how much material you're actually trying to take off in any, any pass and by adjusting the hand wheel and, and in, um, by looking at the digital readout as well it's possible to take a, a, a very fine cut off. Far better to do several light passes and one heavy one which can cause the wood to scorch or, and it, it certainly um, reduces the life of the abrasive paper. So several light passes are much better. This is one of those machines which the longer you own it, the more versatile it becomes. You, you get to know how the machine works, what roots, feed rates work and what combination mm. of grits work for different species of timber. Oh, I'll second that, Andy. I mean, although my, my machine's a toy compared with yours, it achieves exactly the same precision and it's incredibly versatile. I mean, I started off using mine for thicknessing uh, guitar tops and any luthier watching this video will know that you've got to reduce the spruce top to between three and four millimetre. Mm. In the old days, you did it with a hand plane mm. and scraper, and this is an absolute joy to mm. use. Well, this machine is the same. It will, it will work extremely accurately and give you a, a very uh, acceptable finish as well. Well, Andy, that's a fascinating um, look at this uh, machine. Is there any chance it would fit in the boot of my car, do you think? Well, the main casting is, is cast iron, which is why Don't it's... look so over there. Um, We're looking over there. <laughs> you keep on looking at the microphone. Cut. Right. Andy, well, that was a fascinating talk on this uh, acquisition, this dual drum sander. Um, is there any chance it will fit in the boot of my car? Well, the main body of the machine is cast iron, which is why the machine is so accurate. So unless you've got a forklift truck or a crane handy, I think the answer is no. Well, I brought one on a trailer. Oh, well, there you go. Away we go. Thanks for watching.